Chicago Bulls, the Cleveland Cavaliers. We're ready, Michael. Bradley Lee Doherty, born October 19th, 1965. Today's feature is a voice you may recognize, but a name you never hear as one of the best centers of the late 80s, early 90s. In an era where the center was the position of focus and seven footers were at some of their most competitive, Doherty shined and made himself a five-time All-Star through the first seven years of his career, becoming an All-Star as just a sophomore in the NBA. He made the All-Rookie First Team, All-NBA Team in 92 and even has his number 43 retired by the Cavaliers. A deserving gesture seeing as Doherty in his eight years with the organization made the Cavaliers their most competitive in franchise history, even a contender by 92, taking his team to the Eastern Conference Finals, losing to the Bulls once again in the playoffs, stopped by the GOAT a heartbreaking fifth time in Brad Doherty's eight-year career with Cleveland, including back-to-back -back years in 88 and 89. And who could ever forget probably the greatest game winner of all time, a fading shot on Craig Elo in 1989 by Jordan to help Chicago beat the Cavs in the first round while many had the league leading 57 win Cavs advancing to the second round. Michael Jordan called the win in his last dance feature, the win that propelled his era Bulls to greatness by changing their losers mentality. The Bulls would win their first championship under Jordan two years later, leading to dominance of the 90s and two three-peat eras. Many argue the Cavaliers in that time would have been one of the most remembered Eastern Conference teams of the 90s had it not been for Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Brad Doherty was no question the best player and anchor on those teams, averaging 19 points and 10 rebounds over his eight playing seasons and 10-year career with the Cavs. All this and still, he'll probably not make the Basketball Hall of Fame. He was the first pick in the 1986 NBA Draft, ahead of Len Bias, five future All-Stars, and three Hall of Famers. He was a seven-footer in the era of Back to the Basket, former McDonald's All-American, two-time first-team All-ACC at North Carolina, and All-American. His senior team had six future NBA players on it, and Doherty was clearly their best player, so I can understand why the Cavaliers and the consensus leading up to the 86 draft was that Doherty was the top guy. His career was most certainly headed to a Hall of Fame ending, but for these reasons, although he deserves to, most likely won't receive the greatest honor you could in basketball, the Hall of Fame. Here's why. Salute to Terry Rux for this request. It's your boy JC Stunnick Growth. I should get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Brad Doherty was a seven foot center from Black Mountain, North Carolina that towered over kids his age group as long as he could remember and was praised for his ability to run, shoot, rebound, and play defense. He played mostly below the basket and didn't have the most muscular structure leading to him being called soft often as an amateur in high school and at North Carolina, where he became one of the school's best centers of all time. Maybe because he came to college at 16 years old and admittedly felt out of place in an environment guys were two to six years older. He played with Michael Jordan for two years at Carolina before MJ left for the draft and Doherty became the face of the team. After finishing a number retiring career, he became the first pick in the NBA draft and went on to his all-star NBA career. Stunt number one, overshadowed and overlooked. One of the things about sports, basketball specifically, that makes it so special is there's always matched competition on some level and no matter how good the player is on one, he most times meets a match on another and we as fans of the game get to watch the best compete against one another. It's why many fans, including myself, can understand this era of players wanting to play with each other in order to stack as many championships as they could. It's not fun to watch and it's not fair to the players before them that could have easily done the same teaming up with other superstars if they knew that's where the game was headed anyway. I say that to say there's always competition and bring back the era where competition between stars was great. 
Doherty didn't leave the Cavaliers to go play with the best shooting guard in the conference, and he lost in the playoffs every year without it. But it wasn't because of Doherty's play, and him being overshadowed and overlooked wasn't either. It was more because there were simply other centers in the era better than him, or brought more to the table as far as being superstars. In the early to mid 90s, the center position was at its climax, just about all 27 NBA teams having a quality starting center that was 7 foot or right under. Guys like Hakeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, Dikembe Mutombo, Alonzo Mourning, David Robinson and Shaquille O'Neal later in Doherty's career all brought something on one end of the floor that made them a more viable star in the era than Doherty. Brad was also what you would call a nice guy, seen as soft by many to the eyes, and it hurt the perception of him, even though his history and numbers suggested he was anything but. But even with his nearly 20-10 career average and an all-star in his second year, guys like Ewing, Olajuwon, Mutombo, and David Robinson when he finally hit the floor were all-stars out the gate in just their rookie seasons eating up the attention as franchise players in a center-driven league, even though they were all eventually dominated by one guy. Doherty was in the peak era of competition at his position and wasn't as aggressive as the others in making himself stand out outside his solid, steady play. So he was usually overlooked when thinking of the best of his era and when evaluating his career as a Hall of Famer. Stunt number 2 Dominated by the Bulls Many players in the 90s, sadly for them, were dominated by a wild bull running unchecked in the 90s that was only stopped by himself and franchise. Had Michael Jordan not retired the first time to play baseball and honor his father in 93, missing basically two years coming off their first three-peat, he could have made history winning four championships in a row and four finals MVPs at least. Then retiring again in 98 after winning another three championships, averaging 28 points and playing all 82 games, still a dominant player, all because the team sabotaged itself not wanting to bring the coach back. Jordan and the Bulls could have clean swept the 90s. Instead, they'll settle for 6 out of 10, 3 basically 4 years without their best player. Many teams and players lost out on Hall of Fame careers because of it, including Brad Doherty. His Cavaliers teams, as mentioned, found themselves on the losing end to Jordan most of the 90s, 5 times in 8 years for Doherty. The Bulls were not letting them over the hump, beating them in the Eastern Conference Finals in 92 4 games to 2 then sweeping them in the second round the following year. This made the second time in Brad's career he was beaten back-to-back -back years by Jordan and the Bulls. This made the second time in Brad's career he was beaten in back-to-back -back years by Jordan and the Bulls. MJ loved dominating Brad's Cavs, and maybe he found the only thing he could on nice guy Doherty to take personal, that he was once his teammate in college to fuel stopping Doherty's Hall of Fame case. Stunt number 3 Didn't Play Long Enough With as much losing Brad Doherty did to Michael Jordan, he would have needed all those years to be different to even have a case for the Hall of Fame. Although there isn't a set amount of games or years you need under your belt to be considered, your resume still has to include a few more items than Doherty had to be thought of, and that comes in the amount you've been able to play. Besides being the first overall pick, five-time All-Star, All-NBA third team and All-Rookie team, it doesn't qualify as enough. Even without winning a championship, Brad may have made it with a trip to the finals which would have included beating Jordan at least once, more All-NBA teams, maybe some league-leading years and a few more All-Star seasons which he would have had had he not gotten injured. Speaking of injury, Doherty's career was set back the most because of them. With all the other competitive centers in the league and all the soft comments, Brad was still one of the best centers in the game and it led to making his team the most competitive they've been in the last 30 years. Before LeBron, of course. But at just 28 years old, entering his supposed prime, 
Doherty would begin having recurring back issues, which included a herniated spinal disc, which caused him to retire early after the 95-96 season, even though he hadn't played since 93-94. Had he make maybe 10 playing seasons instead of 8, he may have had a case seeing as he would have had the chance to boost his personal and team accomplishments. All in all, Brad Doherty isn't always talked about by the masses, but players understand how good he was and the importance of his impact on the Cleveland Cavaliers who retired his jersey as they should, thinking how bad that franchise would have been had it not been for Doherty's contributions solid center but for these reasons his growth was stunted salute much respect it's your boy jc stunted growth